Hi, this is Dr. Ben Finio with Science Buddies, and in this video, I'll show you how to build your own levitating water fountain. This is a fountain that, as you can see in the inset video, can make it look like water drops are falling up when illuminated with a strobe light. To learn more about the illusion and how it works, check out the previous video linked in the description of this one. In this video, we'll focus on how to build your own. First, you will need a small pump. These are available online at hardware stores and aquarium supply stores. There are many different kinds available, and you might see descriptions like peristaltic pump or diaphragm pump. Don't worry too much about exactly what type you need to buy. The project is pretty flexible and will work with different types of pumps, as long as you can adjust their flow rate, which we'll talk about later. When you buy the pump, you will need to know the voltage required to power the pump, and the diameter of tubing that will fit onto the pump's nozzles. For example, we can see here, this pump operates at 12 volts. This one's also 12 volts, so the text might be too small for you to see on the label there. As for the tubing, you're going to want a pretty narrow diameter tubing to create drops of water. I have found that roughly 1 8 inch inner diameter works well. So some pumps might be directly compatible with that smaller tubing. Other pumps might have larger nozzles that work with larger tubing, so you might need to buy multiple different sizes of tubing to step down the diameter. You will also need to figure out how to power your pump. You will probably notice that the pump doesn't come with a plug, it just has wires or terminals on it like this. One way you can do that is to take a 12 volt wall adapter. So I have taken this one and used wire strippers to cut off the barrel jack plug and then strip the insulation off of the two wires. I can then use alligator clips to connect the bare ends of these wires to either the terminals or the wires from the pump. If you get the connection backwards, the pump will just run in reverse. So you can simply switch the connection of the wires, but for example, I'm going to connect my two alligator clips to the pump wires here, and then connect them to the separate wires from the wall adapter here. When I plug the wall adapter in, that should turn my pump on. Next, you'll want to build a frame to support the tubing about a foot above a container of water. Now, the exact material you use to build the frame doesn't really matter. I've just made this out of scrap wood. Although, the water does tend to splash a bit, so you probably want it to be at least reasonably waterproof. So, for example, cardboard is probably not a great construction material. Once you've built the frame, you want to set up your pump. Now, make sure you read the instructions for your pump. This is a submersible pump, meaning it is designed to be placed in the water, and it is not self-priming, meaning it can't have a very long tube leading into the water because it won't be able to suck in the air to get the water started. So, this pump needs to be in immersed in water to start, but that is not the case for all pumps. Make sure you read the instructions for your pump. So I'm going to place the pump in the water there, and then just use some tape to set the tubing up up here so the tubing is aimed down into the container of water. So now I'm going to switch this pump on, and notice that I get a nearly continuous stream of water. So the flow rate of this pump is much too fast. We need to slow that flow rate down to get drops of water. Now there are various electronic ways you can regulate the speed of a pump, but we are going to go with a much simpler low-tech way and simply put a C-clamp over the tubing that we can adjust and tighten to reduce the flow rate. Now we see that as I adjust the clamp, I can reduce the flow from a steady stream to a series of drops of water. Now it's time to add the strobe. You'll need to find a strobe light app for your phone. Make sure it allows you to adjust both the frequency and the duty cycle of the strobe light. The frequency, measured in hertz, is the number of times the strobe flashes per second. The duty cycle, measured as a percentage, is the percentage of each period that the strobe is on. For example, a frequency of 10 Hz means that the strobe flashes 10 times per second. The period, or the amount of time from the beginning of one flash to the beginning of the next flash, is 1 tenth of a second. If the duty cycle is 50%, that means the strobe is on for half of each period and off for half of each period, or 5 hundredths of a second each. If we drop the duty cycle down to 10%, then the strobe is only on for 10% and off for 90% of each period. 
so it's only on for one hundredth of a second and off for nine hundredths of a second. Now, a quick warning, you might want to buy a strobe light like this one that looks tempting because it has so many bright LEDs. However, in our experience, these don't flash at a high enough frequency and they don't allow you to adjust the duty cycle so they don't work for this project. You can buy a tool called a stroboscope that has these properties, but they are much more expensive, so simply using an app on your phone is a much cheaper option. To get the illusion to work, you'll need to adjust the frequency of your strobe and the frequency of your water drops so they are very close to each other. You can change the frequency of the strobe using your app and the frequency of the water drops using the clamp. The frequency that works best will depend on your exact setup, but we've found that starting somewhere around 30 Hz and then working your way up works well. You'll also want a very low duty cycle, say somewhere around 10%, because that way the water drops will only be illuminated very briefly. If the duty cycle is longer, then the light is on for too long and the drops start to look blurry. The illusion works best in a dark room where the strobe is the only source of light. Depending on the relative frequencies, you can make it look like the drops are moving up, falling down very slowly, or if you get it just right, like they're frozen in place. The effect looks even better in person and can be very difficult to film because of how the strobe light affects your camera. If you want to film it, you'll need to experiment with different camera settings and lighting conditions. For written instructions about how to build your own fountain and how you can use it for a science project, check out the link to the Science Buddies website in the description of this video. For thousands of other fun, hands-on science and engineering projects, visit us online at www.sciencebuddies.org.